Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to the American Investor Show. Please click subscribe if this is your first time listening. From trader and CEO interviews to breaking news about companies you won't hear anywhere else, nobody does a better job at keeping you in the know when it comes to penny stocks. The term penny stock generally refers to a security issued by a very small company that trades at less than $5 per share. Penny stocks are extremely risky, yet they offer rates of return on investment not seen anywhere else. The host, guest, and callers are not registered financial advisors licensed by any government entity, and therefore, the following should be considered entertainment. The host, guest, and callers disclaim all liability in the event any information, commentary, analysis, opinions, advice, and or recommendations prove to be inaccurate, incomplete, or unreliable, or result in any investment losses. Before investing in penny stocks, you should consult a professional to determine what strategy may be best for your individual needs. Now, without further ado, your host, LaSalle Anungu. Hey, what's going on, everyone? What's going on, everybody? Yes, indeed, man. Shout out to everybody slowly in the chat room. Appreciate you for joining me. Today was a great day on the markets. I didn't play small caps. <laughs> I didn't play any penny stocks today. Uh, you know, look, this is the biggest earnings week of the year uh, going into uh, the you know fourth quarter here. So it's, it's all large caps right now on the option side. That's where all the money is right now. But we had some incredible uh, stocks run today. Even on the small caps, we had one uh, incredibly small company deliver huge news today. Huge, 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 huge news. That was a game changer for that stock. And if I was playing the penny side, that's what I would have played. That's what I would have played. Let me give them the ka before I even bring it up. Uh, they definitely deserve that. Uh, but shout out to the people in the chat room. TJ the Great Poker Pro. What's up, man? Trevor Proby, Gerardo, DPG, Cool Cats, Felix. Ant Lamb, SC Trucker. What's up, man? Hey, SC, it's been a minute since I've seen you, bro. Chris McKinney, what's up, man? Glad to have you back. Quintavious, Derek Graham, what's up, man? Joe Silva. Yes, indeed, man. Yeah, I, I just started up, so I just started up. Uh, I'm going to definitely make sure I'll be on time next time. So, won't, won't keep you up all night, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to, you know, get abreast of where uh, your head is at. What are you guys looking at this week? You know, we had the markets pull back midday today. Caught, caught a lot of people off guard. Saw a lot of people run into gold. I uh, will pull up the gold chart. Here's the cues. Here's the cues right now. We saw a lot of people run into the cues uh, in the morning, and then it ended up just, again, falling on its ass as the market pulled back. Now, here's the thing. I want you guys to keep this bookmarked in your trading are you guys familiar with the cnn money fear and greed index the cnn money fear and greed index is is uh, if you follow the markets on a daily pretty basis, accurate you may need some all right hold on baseball. let me volatility is back let me exit out of that because there's a little banners on that website but uh let me go ahead and put it in the chat room because this little index that's updated regularly i think it's every day actually is very very accurate let me put it in the chat room and can I get it to where I can go to that site and just kind of talk a little bit about it without that damn video popping up hold on all right so basically what the index does it attracts seven different indicators of investor sentiment all right seven different indicators of investment sentiment and you know, everything from, you know, the VIX and uh, the S&P 500, certain moving days, all, all that kind of stuff is all added into this complicate this, this, you know, complicated computation. And it comes up with a number between zero and 100 that determines where the market is. And that's levels of either extreme fear or extreme greed. And right now, we are in the area of extreme greed. And this index is actually really accurate because every time it's gotten to that level where it's 80 or above, it becomes a very 
excellent indicator for a top in the market. For a top in the market. So I posted that in the chat room. Uh, go ahead and bookmark that if you're on the computer laptop. Go ahead and bookmark that. Uh, those of you guys coming into the chat room, press like on this if you can. Uh, but again, here are the cues. The market's pulling back, and it's market wide, right? It's not just technology. We saw it today. And let me get rid of my uh, moving averages here. We, we saw it today in the DIA uh, Spider Industrial Average. We saw it in the SPY. We saw it across the board in these ETFs, the market pulling back. What was it? Small uh, small caps, IWM? Oh, IWM, same thing. Breaking below that 149.43, which I thought it would never get below. Uh, now we're at 148.86. Shout out to Connor, because Connor, you were talking about the 149.50s uh, going back to options that you were holding in, with some November 3rds. So interesting to see that. But this this candlestick, I mean, these these candlesticks on some of these are pretty telling. I mean, this is very much a very bearish engulfing candlestick here, almost like a Marabuzo, Marabu, whatever you want to call it, Marabatsu, some people would say. But that's that's indicative of a stock that's going to be pulling back, right? That's going to be pulling back. And it's well-deserved. As you can see here, we've been trending on oversold levels for quite some time. We've been trending on oversold level, overbought levels for quite some time. So it's 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 time, right? It's time. Uh, are we going to see a pullback like we saw back in August or if we go all the way back to March or possibly June? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but, you know, it's, it's well-deserved. We can say that. We can admit that it's well deserved. Joe Silver, you said EGO is a it's a good buy. Yeah. Uh, oh, EGO. Wow. What happened to EGO today? Wow. Look at that candlestick, man. What happened? Uh, da, 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 da. I don't see what what drove it that low. Uh, yes, absolutely a buy. I would definitely be all over this, but I'm trying to figure out why it's uh, it's lower like this. Uh, somebody give me the news. You know the number, 305-600-2896, or just put it in the chat room. Uh, it's a dip. Yeah, it's a, definitely a dip buy opportunity here. I mean, at these at these levels. Uh, again, that's, you know, let's see the market. You know, let's, let's get some confirmation on this bullish, on this bearish action. Uh, but look at the price action tomorrow morning. I can't, you know, uh, look at the price action tomorrow morning on the stock. If you're seeing uh, level two guys, you know, going in there and, and you know, slapping the ask, uh, definitely, yeah, man, jump on this. Uh, jump on this. But uh, here's the five-minute chart on what happened today. But, yeah, okay, I see you opened up lower. You opened up lower, so something came out. Something came out, and then you started to see, obviously, uh, you know, people who were in it were running for the hills. People who were in the stock were running for the hills. So, again, uh, wow, that's not cool on uh, anybody who was in EGO. That's not cool at all. But I just want to show you guys, again, the chasing into gold today as the market pulled back toward the midday. Look at the GLD Spider Gold ETF. As people ran into the into gold for safety, you just saw it just take off. We saw an increase on the VIX today. I saw, uh, you know, options on the GLD literally take off. I mean, the, the, these options just went nuts. We'll take a look at that later in the day. All right. Yeah, that that was insane. I mean, that 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 gap down. And again, I'm not seeing any news on that, so I I have no idea. But boy, to wake up to something like that, uh, I mean, you you fell off the roof there, man. Opened up at 189. Uh, you closed the previous day at, what, 216, 217 uh, last Friday? And to open up like that, man, that's, that's, that's sad for those uh, EGO reducing its production guidance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But as we started the show, um, again, this is a big, big week for large caps. Tomorrow morning, we got Caterpillar. We got, uh, who else is going? I think it's not Boeing, but another one of those airline or type plays or huge manufacturing plays. We got McDonald's 
tomorrow. McDonald's pulled back today earlier than even some of the ETFs. I saw McDonald's pull back earlier than the ETFs uh, as people are expecting uh, uh, world global sales to, to hit numbers. But U.S. sales, they still could, uh, expect U.S. sales to pull back. And by the way, if you haven't been following McDonald's, they're selling off a lot of their corporate owned stores and they're making it literally all franchise. McDonald's wants to go all franchise. Basically, they're not going to have any more corporate owned stores. That's basically their 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 get gone right now. All right. So let's go back into the penny CGUD. OTC stock up 27 percent. I don't know what the volume is here. Don't know. I'm not seeing. I'm not getting a volume number in here. Don't like the chart, but hey, I mean, seeing some some movement here, some volume obviously coming into the stock lower volume today than than back there on what is that Thursday? Actually, no, that's the 19th. So very irregular buying in this stock there, Graham. Looks you said it's going to be taking off today, taking off this week. All right, we'll take a look at it. Uh, the stock that you know I talked about. Last week, I told everybody it's a scam. Don't trade it. Don't buy it. It ended up running the, was it the next day? Yeah, the very next day after I said that. And sure enough, it did exactly what I knew it was going to be. It's going to sell off. Obviously, you're going to have some dip buyers because that's what you see in OTCs. You get guys who pump up these complete frauds, these scams, all right? And I don't care what filings or whatever. I can make all that on a printer in five minutes. And if it's not filed on OTC markets, it's it's not real. I don't care what anybody says. If it's not on OTC markets, if you can't pull it up at the SEC website, I just I don't believe it. You got guys posting, you know, state filings, state filings. You know, that's anyway, I don't, I don't want to complain or sound like I'm whining because it's just uh, as someone who's promoted OTC stocks, I know all the scams and the fact that guys fell. For a state filing, it's just ridiculous. Anybody, I mean, I can submit anything to about any company on a state filing. It'll take a day or two until they realize it and like, oh, no, this this guy is not affiliated with the company, deleted. But you can get it filed. I can go to any corporation right now and file a change of address, a change of name. But eventually they're going to find out and it's going to get deleted off the system, you know. Anyway, let's 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 get back to it. DDRX, uh, DDRX, up twelve percent, up twelve percent on today's move. DDRX, and I think you brought it up, Joe Silver, last week, right? I, I, did you bring it up on Friday? We did bring this up on our oversold place for last week. Nice volume in the stock today here. Three point two million shares on ddrx biotherapeutic play healthcare stock I, I like the candlestick i like where it is on the chart uh, you know figure out again what the story is behind this this uh you know falling window here but uh i know we did brush up on it a little bit on friday yeah nice way to move back into into you know positive territory on this stock let's look at the 10 minute on today's move all right, so you had to be in there in the morning to really get the move. As you see here, uh, stock opened up Friday. This is Friday's move. All right, and then here's today's move going into the morning. Uh, you got the morning push pulled back though, but still was able to end up high. But it, you know, you you really won by getting into this uh, last Friday. That's really where you wanted to be in. That's when we talk about these dip buys. Sometimes, you know, being able to catch it at the bottom works. But sometimes you can see, too, you know, you can end up falling on your ass. As we pulled up the EGO and you saw it, how even though it opened up lower, it ended up continuing to sell off. So uh, and then what it's interesting because where it opens up at at the bottom like that ends up becoming a resistance point to where everybody's waiting for it to break out of that out of that drop. In fact, let me pull that chart up just to show you guys again so it opened up lower it sells off and interesting enough i bet you in the next couple weeks this 180 maybe in the next you know week week and a half especially if we continue to see a run in gold 
this 180-190 is going to be a very interesting resistance level for some time. But everybody, you're going to have a lot of buyers waiting for that 180-190 crack. So I, you know, if you if you're willing to risk it, I think it's safe right here. You got a very safe entry here. You're down 28% on the stock. You really don't have much to lose uh, if you're if you're being patient enough. And again, we get continued confirmation on on gold buying uh, and this pullback on the overall market. What's going on, Coralie? Follow. I'm still following what's going on in Puerto Rico. Uh, completely sad, man. You still got people down there suffering. So, Coralie, I hope your family and, and friends over there are, are doing well. Are doing well. Joe Silver, do you think EGO closes the gap after a week or so? If we if we continue to get a bull in a bullish action in gold, yes, absolutely. But uh, you know, let's let's see confirmation tomorrow. And then, you know, let's look at the price action. Let's look at the price action. What's going on, the Tom G? Can I recommend a source to learn options? Man, Tasty Trade. I mean, they got a, a channel on YouTube. They got a website. Uh, they're live every single day. TastyTrade.com tasty or go to YouTube. Look up Tasty Trade. Watched a lot of Tasty Trade videos. Uh, another guy on YouTube, Sang Uh What else? TD Ameritrade. By the way, have you guys who have TD, have you gone and checked out the free resources now that they bought out invest tools now that they bought out invest tools all the invest tools like learning stuff it's all under education in td ameritrade and that shit is really good those videos are really really good i mean those are the same quality of videos that you got guys out here selling it to you for 300 400 a month and td is giving it to you free free of charge you can literally sit there all day and watch hours upon hours of videos and all kinds of information. You said they bought up Scottray, yeah, yeah, we uh, definitely bought up Scottray. So definitely check that out if you got uh, TD Ameritrade. HTGM, HTGM up twenty three percent on. Uh, what was the news there? I'm not seeing any news. Let's see here, very bearish primary trend intermediate uh, short-term trend is going higher you got these lower or higher lows developing here since uh the second so great month of uh, october great month of october for htgm great month of october for htgm way to hit it out the park with today now you're looking at uh at 70 now on the rsi here on the daily chart so could be seeing some profit taking here not saying you're going to get it just saying you could be seeing it's more likely here on htgm so if it's something you're looking to get into it looks like you missed a the move there uh entry was way back uh here where was that that bullish move here probably this this top this beautiful uh breakout higher here on the 12th swallowing up multiple days of action here that's definitely a bullish 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 candlestick going higher nice move htgm chart writer said a td all right yeah absolutely uh excellent videos hmny you guys remember hmny we watched it go from 40 to 30 and literally fall on its ass now back at 13 dollars a share would have been a great short for a lot of people there were op opportune times to take advantage of it but the you know the the margin it was just too expensive it was just way too expensive it wasn't even worth it uh, to borrow uh, but HTGM falling lower now as you can see here that uh, now lowering possibly what you know tens maybe going into nines or eights who knows uh, until we get those numbers from MoviePass you remember one of the biggest things about the run that had me questioning um, among other uh, traders was the fact that. Yes, they got movie pass, but we didn't know what what numbers, you know, how profitable it was for the company. We really didn't know. We didn't know how profitable it was. And now, as you can see, traders aren't waiting to sit on those gains. They're taking it and leaving. All right. And who gets left holding the bag? Guys who jump in late. WMT Walmart. When is Walmart earnings? When is Walmart earnings? Interesting to see Walmart not pull back today with the rest of the market. 
uh, Walmart now overextended here uh, on Walmart up 1.38% uh, today uh, yeah on that one Walmart $88 Walmart 88 bucks man this was a stock for a long time couldn't get out of the 50s 40s now we're looking at Walmart $88 a share of Walmart boy I'd never imagine myself saying something like that on Walmart RSI oversold yeah on, on Walmart is it gonna keep going up uh, I mean look look you know we've been in 80s for almost a month and a half on the SPY so uh, figure out when when earnings is I have a date here of 11 16 I'm not sure if that's right uh, here on trading view they they kind of are off one or two days so what's going on David investors hang out in the building DXTR Dextera surgical Dextera surgical up 17 percent uh, again no news no news I see some news back on October 9th but no recent news besides this technical oversold level that got a lot of people coming in here interesting volume here at these lower levels look at all these buyers coming in and take advantage of that oversold move the stock was already pretty liquid about seven six about seven million shares being traded daily uh, but that oversold move brought in more volume 37 million shares traded today 37 million shares traded today on uh, DXTR one of the biggest gainers on the market but it did not come close it did not come close to SNES uh, I saw that ticker the whole day I just kept thinking Super Nintendo Donkey Kong and all my favorite games that I grew up with I just SNES I mean that's uh, when I every time I see SNES I just think Super Nintendo bro I can't Street Fighter NBA Jam you know I just that's all I think about when I see that SNES brings a lot of memories uh, this company 15 million dollar market cap to start off the day right comes out at 8 30 right it came out at 8 30 they came out and said they had a partnership deal, a distribution deal for one of their drugs with the company, what was that? Uh, let me, Univar. Now, Univar, I looked this up earlier today. Univar has a $3 billion market cap. Univar is a big-ass fucking company. Now, Univar is not necessarily big here in the state. I mean, they're big here in America in a certain respect. They're not as big as some of the, you know, like Merck or, you know, Pfizer or those. But they've got you know huge international holdings like mexico and stuff like that they make a lot of third tier drugs and whatnot copycats and they came out and said hey we got a distribution deal with with univar and the market interestingly enough didn't didn't respect the move in the morning look at the volume that came out of the market and i made sure i was like did this really come out at 8 30 and yes i do see the article that you know the press release and it did say it came out about 8 30 in the morning but almost an hour before the market opened so i don't know if somebody else spread the news or there there was another article posted but all the volume came in at about 11 30 11 45 you know so you had almost an hour and a half when really nobody really was i mean you had obviously you had an incredible move from the mornings you know you had some people who were watching the tape right and 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 you know seeing the press release but look at the markets just show up at about 11 30 so maybe market watch yahoo news something out there caught it and wrote about it and uh there you go uh, breaking that that morning high set up there at 215 just annihilated that just just again annihilated that morning high and uh let me give you that bomb on that one man. just just way to destroy that ticker snes um there it is man well you know i use equity feed for my news equity feed has a news feeder uh built into the app it's a news streaming thing built into the app that you know updates 24 7 all right, updates 24/7, and uh, 
you know, you're seeing news and news is posted, you know, whenever these companies put out news, some more important than others. Uh, like, for example, right now, I just saw at eight o'clock uh, ALXN, which is, you know, too expensive. But FDA just approved one of their drugs. FDA just approved a drug on ALXN. Now, this is a hundred dollar stock. So, I mean, not much you can do on that in terms of, uh, uh, you know, shares. But, you know, so, yeah, you're it's a live streamer. Again, equityfeed.com. Get two weeks free. No credit card required. All right. Let's take a look back at the pennies. AMED. Athlon Medical. Athlon Medical. Not looking at an intraday chart. Let's look at the daily. Uh, yeah, I'm not feeling this, man. I'm not feeling it. Obviously, it had a really uh, great day a couple days ago. Couldn't hold those gains. Nobody wanted uh, $3 in that stock. Look at that. Back to $0.99. Cents. From $3.80, not even, what is it, not even a month ago, not even a month ago, so lost well over 90% of its value, you know, almost 90% of its value in about a month. So sad to see in that stock, so sad to see. I uh, saw you guys bring up this uh, refuable, renewable energy play, Jivo, up 9%. Uh, you know, G people are talking about Jivo again. This is a stock that I never thought people would start talking about again. Uh, but here we have Jivo, you know, putting up some gains today, up 9% on Jivo. On Jivo. I'm thinking you're talking about FVPD. Or you Poker Pro. Were you talking about Force Protection Video? A stock that will get to opinion and come right back during the day. What's going on, Habib? HCHN. Uh, Aculon Pharmaceuticals. Aculon Pharmaceuticals down 3%. Uh, don't know much about this one. I know we brought it up here before. Bad Scientist, what's up, man? Hello, you there? Bats, can you hear me? I'm not hearing you, bro. Can you hear me, Sal? All right, there you go, loud and clear. <laughs> How's everything going? Good, good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Um, I had a quick questions for you. This is this is a questions time, and maybe I can throw in a couple of tickers. So, for something like SNES, how do you play that going into the second day? Because I've noticed with a lot of these stocks, I mean, this is a wonderful, you know, bullish multiple candle engulfing signal. How do you play this going into day two? Uh, would you be playing it long on a five minute? Would you be looking to short it? How exactly would you play it? Well, if I was interested in this stock, I think I think you got a lot of day traders into this who are looking to sell to somebody tomorrow. So I'm looking for I'm looking for buyers, you know, who are jumping in tomorrow on these on 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 that market open. But I'm looking for the people okay. who are in today to sell to those buyers, and many of them are in and in heavy. So I'm looking for a dump between 9:30 and like 9:45. You're gonna get between 9:30 like 9:45. You'll get a run up, but then eventually okay. everybody wants to dump, right? Because somebody wants to, you know, it's, it's it's like hot potato. So I'm looking for a big dump. Uh, between like 9.45 to about 10. And if you ever think that you're going to get a, another run in that, you'll see it between, uh, between you know, 9.50 and 10.15. If you'll start seeing people dip buying into that, into that sell-off. Because you will have a morning panic sell-off into this. And that's just guys who are in it today who are looking to dump to somebody tomorrow. And a lot of people do that. And in, in stocks like this, they're very good where... A guy will come in at 350 and sell pre-market tomorrow. If he doesn't get his, his ask pre-market, then he's going to wait until right. 935, 937 and dump to somebody there. He's He's been in the, literally in the stock for over the course of overnight, but actually in the trade uh, during business hours less than, what, 20, 30 minutes. So that's kind of how you'll see okay. a lot of people play something like this. So I wouldn't even touch it until the stock pulls back, and you'll see if there are any dip buying, uh, you know, 
in the stock tomorrow morning. Right. And would you do this on a five-minute time frame? Um, I know recently you've been talking about going on a longer time frame. Yeah. For this one in particular, I would know. I would probably stick to even a one or even two minute because this is going to move very, very quickly. So I wouldn't, I, you know, it, it, it's not something that had regular volume. As you can see here, this doesn't have uh, a daily, you know, support volume of this kind of liquidity. So this is all right. new money. This is all new money, and this is not very loyal money, right? This is not going to stick around. So this is going to move very quickly, and I don't think a five-minute or a ten-minute chart is going to do. Is, you're going to end up missing, uh, I think, a real move in this stock if you're looking to play it. I think you know that that move is going to be very quickly. It's going to be very quick, and it's going to be very sudden. And you're either going to get in in a dip buy opportunity to ride it back higher, or you know, you short because there's no buyers and you come in all the way back down to the twos. So can you see it retesting close to the 350s? Oh, I, I couldn't tell you that, man. I, I Again, I, I, yeah. I you know, I, I, I can't predict where it's going to open up at or, or not. I'm looking at it right. after hours. Right. I'm not seeing right now there any push. You know, we had a, a stock last week, if you remember. What was that? It was up on merger news, right? We were so excited, possibly second day, and it fell on its ass. So right, uh, right. you just never know anymore. And that's why I, I think, again, in the morning, you get the, the market open on order or order on open, uh, moo orders, right? And when right, those guys right. come in, when those guys come in, they'll pick up the shares from the people who are in today. And if okay. they don't have the buying energy to keep it up there, it's coming right back down. Okay. And speaking about dip buying with gold, um, do you think um, HMY, Harmony Gold, um, South African gold company, do you think that's at a good dip buy in the 160s right now? Because it, I guess it's it's kind of retesting its lows, the 160 lows from, from a few months back. Yeah, let me look at uh, this on the daily chart. The thing about uh, yeah, HMNY, on the daily. yeah, on the daily, yeah, on the daily HMNY Harmony Gold. Now Harmony, it's interesting you bring that not, up, Ben, because it, it, it is a volatile <laughs> stock, right? It's, it yeah. is a, a stock yeah, that can really gold. move, and yeah. now at these oversold levels, I would, you know, I would see what happens tomorrow on this. But you know, if we if we really are in what some people are already rushing to conclude is a cor a, a slight correction. Then yeah, I would I would get into this. I would get into this uh, because you you, okay. you know for the rest of the week I I don't see why not that you'll be back in the one seventies mid one seventies by the end of the week, especially if this right if, right know, this market pulls back and people are running to commodities for security. Okay, okay, yeah, because I just noticed. I mean, between June and July, you did have that. It kind of stalled out in the one sixties. Yeah. So I was wondering. Maybe it's going to use the 160 um, support level to bounce off of. But yeah. obviously, if it breaks below that, then you're looking at kind of like a new yeah. short time low. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, and, and when you look at the gold charts, just keep keep following that. You know, may, make sure you're following the price of gold, because, again, that's really going to determine whether or not you see guys start running to some of these miners. Uh, you know, to find, you know, volatile plays that they can take advantage of. Cool. And then last question, DOLV. Why did DOLV move today? Did it move? I know they're uh, changing tickers, yeah. like, tomorrow or the day after. What was the move? What caused that move? Man, this, this is the beauty of OTCs, man. This is just, you know, when you're not expecting it and when everybody's like, fuck that stock, I don't care about it, it's a scam, blah, 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 then, you know, that's that's when it pops off, right? I mean, DOLV had a run uh, at the beginning of the month, sold off from those highs, and now all of a sudden, all of this volume just runs into that stock, and I have no clue why. I have no clue why. <laughs> no clue where all Neither that Neither do I. I have no clue where Neither all that volume. I mean, this is volume this stock hasn't seen in in months i mean look at this bar of this volume i have never seen 51 million shares in a nine cent stock that you know is has very questionable assets honestly so uh does it stay above this who knows who knows yeah 
Then finally, um, WAC, they, they announced that they're doing some kind of restructuring, possibly Chapter 11 type of setup. In, in all the stocks or most of the stocks that you've seen in your, in your experience, is that always a bad thing or can you get like a bounce come off um, of, of a Chapter 11 announcement? Yeah, you actually can. Uh, not too long ago, I can't remember, but Batch, you may remember this, but there was a a food, it was a national chain of restaurants. I forgot what it was called. Yeah. Ah, oh, man, what was the name? But they were very much like Chipotle, right? And they were trading on right. the NASDAQ. Uh, do you guys remember what that ticker was called? Uh Oh man, this was earlier last year. Restaurant. Yeah. Was this Ruby Tuesdays? No. no. It was like a healthy restaurant. Uh, uh. God, it was like healthy food. It started with either a C or an S. Uh, okay. Did, did it start like cold. Because I know there that? was there was e diets, but I think that was online. Yeah, Cota, Costa, so, something, maybe something to that effect. But it was a restaurant. Okay. They had a couple, like, 80 restaurants or something. They ended up getting delisted. Uh, that's my said taco. <laughs> but uh, they ended up getting delisted. And the stock went, went. Uh, they, they came out with the same thing, but it was a Chapter 7. They went down to, like, 7 cents. The stock went to 7 cents and then soared from 7 to about 12 cents over the course of about two days. And it would have been an incredible move for anybody who took advantage of it. Uh, so, yes, there are opportune times for that. But you get, you understand you're playing with fire when you do that because they are <laughs> going to be getting delisted. And, you know, you're risking a lot. You're risking a lot. Yeah, I know W. Koozie, Koozie, there we go. That's the stock, Clayvon. Yeah, it was Koozie. C-O-S-I. That was the one. C-O-S-I. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, I remember that from last year. Yeah. I remember that. So the way the way WAC is restructuring, I think it's restructuring. They're going, going to um, re relieve up to $700 million in debt, but uh -huh. certain aspects of the company, because you, you know it's a mortgage, um, um, mortgage financing type of um, company, and it has so many different components. I think it has three components to it, the refinancing and um, two other components. But in the, in the restructuring and Chapter 11, they're going to leave out a couple of the components within that company, and those, those components will continue operating as usual. So I'm not sure whether to read into it as, is this good news? Does this mean the company will still trade under WAC, or is it, you know, getting delisted, or will like DOLV? Is it going to be now traded under a new company? Will they issue new shares? Yeah, that's 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 one of those questions, man. You might have to pick up the phone and and call investor relations, man. <laughs> man you know, just being honest with you, bro, take five yeah. minutes of your time. Yeah. And I think you might going to have to and, and pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm I'm an investor or I'm interested in becoming an investor. I have a, you know, a couple of questions I'd like answered. I mean, honestly, I mean, uh, that's that's a question you have to ask, because at this point, you know, uh, yeah. now they haven't been, you know, under a dollar for for that long. So they're not, you know, at, poor, right. at a, a list for or a threat to be delisted because uh, it hasn't been that long. I mean, it's just been what since about March or so. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, and no, no mention of delisting was talked yeah. about. In fact, they were saying next month is when they'll try fina for finalizing things. So yeah. there's no mention of it. I think they have until the 25th to agree to the terms. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm hoping there's going to be a bounce. I mean, this company's been around since the 1950s, but I think it's kind of acquired other companies and kind of changed they believe they have enough um money after this restructuring they'll be able to operate um in a more streamlined fashion so mm -hmm. i'm not mm -hmm. really sure if, if it will all work out but um as usual i appreciate your your help um i know your wealth of knowledge and just your broad level of knowledge on these things is, is actually um pretty impressive so that's why i wanted to reach out to you
Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Bats. I appreciate the call. Thanks, Sal. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Yes, indeed. Appreciate that, Bats. Yeah, yeah. WAC, here's the thing about WAC, too, is that uh, I don't believe they still pay a dividend. They may have, have, have got, you know, tossed that a long time ago. But, uh, you know, they they had several malls uh, that they owned. And obviously nobody's really going to the mall anymore. And that's that, that that's also an underlying thing. I don't know if they still own those properties. But last time I had looked at the stock, uh, you know, again, this this is a stock that had much better days uh, going back to way back when. But, uh, you know, nobody's going to the mall anymore. And that's that that's a lot of, you know, of their problem is that a lot of their holdings were in commercial spaces, particularly retail spaces. So they had significant amount of Macy's, a lot of J.C. Penney's, a lot of things like that. And what are those companies doing? They're cutting back, you know. Companies like Macy's and J.C. Penney's, for those of you guys who don't know, they don't really own their retail. They don't own their their buildings, right? They, you know, a, a developer builds a mall, and they are considered the uh, anchor, right? It's called the anchor. They're the anchor of the retail space. So the anchor is maybe, just as I was saying, a Macy's or a J.C. Penney or could be sometimes a Walmart if you're looking at different kind of of, of, of retail spaces where it's like maybe the walmart and then around the walmart these small little other boutique stores like a dollar general or something so it's it's different bills for different kind of communities and wac had many of those kind of spaces where you know they're getting killed right now by internet all right so getting back to this somebody's saying uh d-o-l-v float well, you guys are loving DOLV, huh? I mean, let me know. I mean, you guys are saying got a lot of assets. Is it still a Chinese company? Higher level, is this still a Chinese company or no? Clayvon said, yeah, you get most of your shoes online. Yeah, man, I, I was uh, shopping for shoes over the weekend, and I just happened to remember about Reebok, and I was like, oh, damn, I forgot about Reebok. Reebok still exists. So I go to the Reebok website. Reebok has one shoe, one basketball shoe. And it's like the old ass shacks. I was like, damn. Reebok has really fell off, man, from when from from the 90s. They really fell off. All right, let's get back to it. Uh SOL. SOL. Uh Rensola American. Rensola American. Uh, not seeing much on that one. I see here it is up 17%. Again, very bearish primary trend. The only, only thing that's unusual is that move today. But again, you left a lot of people up there. 319 pulled back to 276. So not too much commitment out there. I, I, you know, these long shadows, man, that's, you know, very indicative of a lot of anxiety of those higher prices and an overall lack of commitment. So here's the stock. Uh, for the day so you moved higher on relatively low volume I mean you know only 790,000 shares traded look at the volume just die after 11 o'clock not too many buyers who are able to keep those higher prices and uh, because of that you know guys start having to lower their ask and therefore buyers lower their bids and there goes the price uh, down to 276 from that 314 all right so volume is what this stock needs if you want to maintain those higher prices but uh, I would stay away from that right now uh, GSS somebody bring up GSS uh, yeah obviously you know look with the market again if this bearish market does in fact Confirm tomorrow. Yes, you want to look up some of these gold miners that have been beat up over the last week, week and a half. So I'm bringing up GSS. Uh, not bad. I think you can pick up some better gold plays, though. Let me pull up my list of gold. And I think you could put up some better ones with some. That one's got decent volume, right, though. I mean, that 1.2. Uh, mill MUX. Here's another one that's pretty beat up. I like MUX when it moves. I like MUX when it moves here. Oh, just below, 
my 209 support uh mm, mux uh, i would i would get back on mux though again if we get that confirmation tomorrow though this is this this is one that can move really nicely when you get back to winning again on gold uh, another one iag how's that looking i like iag a lot too because this one moves along with gold in fact if you pull up the gold ticker there it is that's gold that's iag see that that's iag that's gold so you very very similar chart movement in both iag and gold uh so I, I like gold you know obviously it's pulled back recently but again if it starts winning again boom here's is is the expected move higher not the cheapest stock in the world right not the cheapest stock in the world 573 you're gonna have to add some size to it uh but again if you you just don't want but you want a similar move then you might have to go on the option side to really take advantage of that Higher level, uh, up 600. You're up 600 percent in what? DOLV. Yeah, somebody brought up cat. Uh, great day for me today on cat. Uh, I made about what 1,200 dollars today on the market. I posted that on Instagram as well as Twitter. Uh, played caterpillar excitement in the option space. I'm going to possibly, more than likely, play the downside tomorrow on caterpillar because we're overextended here. I was just playing the excitement as, as uh, people were going to load up into uh, earnings tomorrow. So you had, interestingly enough, I don't know where that came from, but you had the stock. Here's Caterpillar. Just kind of show you what I did today uh, on Caterpillar. You had this interesting midday dump. I don't know where that kind of came from. So I had multiple opportunities to play this on the option. So played that. And again, you can look at the trade on my Twitter on the time frames and stuff like that. So it was selling off in the morning. Played that. You know, just common sense trade. I mean, tomorrow they're about to annihilate earnings. Why is it selling off? It's guaranteed move higher. So played that uh, uh, this morning and uh, netted about $1,200. Also played PayPal. Uh, saw PayPal. And this is going to be a similar move that, that I think is going to happen uh, to a lot of these other stocks where, again, earnings comes out, right? Earnings comes out, boom, 4 or $5 higher. But you don't have buyers up there. Those the, the people who are selling off into this, these are people from last night. These are people from last night. That's what we just got done talking off to bat scientists. These are guys who are in there from last night. They were looking to sell. So they're selling their shares, and that's a beautiful option where you can buy a $71 in the money put and just ride it down. Just ride it down for 10, 15 minutes, and you're out. Uh, or you can hold like I did. I actually was, I wasn't sure, so I did a $70 put with a two-week expiration just in case it was actually going to go against me. Uh, because the overall daily chart was oversold. So I was like, fuck, if it went against me intraday, at least over the course of a week, it's not going to hold. Uh, and I'll go back into the green, uh, even if it goes against me. So I uh, took the $70, ended up closing at $69.80. I ended up selling up too, selling too early, uh, but nice, nice on, on PayPal. Yeah, all right. Appreciate that, Bats. Appreciate that. And by the way, I'm I'm using his uh I'm using that that four and eight exponential moving average. I'm using the fifteen and thirty. I I I'm I've really simplified trading to simply the RSI moving averages, maybe MACD, Williams R once in a while, money flow here and there. Uh but you know, just just looking at candlesticks and again, studying this, you know. The candlestick course. You don't even need this particular book, but this book has already paid for itself. The candlestick course. Uh, you can get this on. It is on Pirate Bay. So I mean, if you want to, you know, if you got a e-reader, all right, if you got an e-reader, so you can actually get the the actual book. I got the actual book because sometimes I don't like having to wait till this thing to charge. But just go to Walmart, get yourself a little forty dollar tablet like this, bro. Get yourself a little tablet like this. You know, download some books bro, and feed your mind, man.
feed your mind. You, you'd be surprised. 40 bucks at Walmart, 50 bucks at Walmart. You don't need something fly. And all the free knowledge and free books. And let me give you the link to my library I love uh, to, to get books off of. Again, shout out to... Uh, uh, who, who gave me this? I think... Uh, let me shout out my man real quick because I want to make sure... I, I think it was... Uh, Dave, yeah, Dave gave me this. Dave Thomas gave me this. I had this link a while ago, but I lost it. It was just amazing that he came out of nowhere and gave it to me again. And I had I already had this, but I couldn't remember where I put the link. But here's the link to one of my favorite PDF libraries. There it is right there. It's the Trading Trading Ebooks Collection. That that's uh that is a torrent that I used to give out here. But that's the actual torrent. All the books in that torrent, but on a website. You can actually just go there, click on the book that you want. It goes straight into the PDF. You can just uh, save and download as a PDF. And then put it on your tablet or on your phone and just read it, bro. You know, an hour a day, dude. An hour a day. You'd be surprised how drastically it proves your, your trading. You don't, you don't got to be... In front of you know a tablet or something for five six hours, just an hour a day, thirty minutes a day, you know until you get it done. Anyway, let's keep moving. Somebody uh, bringing up BYOC, uh, Beyond Commerce, BYOC Beyond Commerce, Beyond Commerce. Like I know you guys are loving these OTCs, but I can't I can't believe you guys are missing out on. Some of these, I mean, this is a huge earnings week, and you guys are playing, you know, OTCs right now. Like, I mean, do what you do, though. Do what you do. I mean, don't, don't get it twisted, but mix it up a little bit, man. Mix it up a little bit. Uh, BYOC up to, oh, actually, no gain today. No gain today at all on BYOC. Two cents a share. Two cents a share of BYOC. Uh. SBI Poker Pro, you and SBI, you just love this SBI. What do you see in this? I, I I want you to win though. I want whatever you see in this, I want you to win huge because it's a dirt cheap stock and I want you to wake up one day and it's up, you know, ten cents a share. That'd be a huge fucking move for you. Uh but I'm not I'm not seeing it though, man. I'm I'm not seeing it, but you know, whatever it is you see in this thing, I want you to win. Just know that. I want you to win. Small bank rolls, yeah, it's up four percent. Keep on, keep on going, man. Keep on going on that. Uh, six o two, you're on the air. What's up? Poker Pro. Hey, going what's on? going on? Not much. All right, so I've been trying to call you on this, and I've just been waiting for the right time. If you look at the news from October twelfth of SPI. On here. Okay. The two companies, I'm not, I cannot pronounce their names, but one of them is going to purchase 80 million shares. Another company is going to purchase 240 million shares for a total of $33.92 million. Mm -hmm. So, from what I was reading now, honestly, I am still a newbie with the stock market. So I'm learning as I go every single day, and you're honestly the, uh, the biggest uh, influence to, to follow and to, to learn. Appreciate it. So that. people were saying on Stock Twitch that um, they have until October 27th to um, meet the NASDAQ requirements, mm -hmm. which is this Friday. Um, and after that, I, I believe they can either get delisted or they can file an extension. Now, this purchase hasn't gone through yet, and everybody on Stock Twist is talking about when is that purchase going to happen, and it's been fluctuating between a, literally a penny every day yeah. for the last week. You know, it, it went from uh, 11 cents to 21 cents, I believe it was, and then dropped back down to 15 cents, back to 12, Back to 13, and it's been fluctuating from 13 and a little bit of 14 today. So, like uh, with that news, with, with it being uh, 320 million shares that are supposed to be purchased, 
is that basically the call sign of saying that it's going to, when that order is fulfilled, that it is going to just, boom, you know, just skyrocket. Well, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, obviously, if they come into the open market with those with that kind of buying power, hell yeah, I mean, it's going to really move the stock. Uh, when they say, you know, the okay, I'm looking at it right now. It looks like two Chinese companies, and they want to purchase eighty and two hundred and forty million. I'm trying to figure out because I'm looking at what what is the float on this? I mean, they want to purchase eighty million shares, and then they <laughs> say. Their float. I think it's six hundred forty-one million. Oh, six hundred forty-one million is their float, right? Uh, Which is exactly ha uh, double the amount. Yeah, hold on. Okay, yeah, I'm not even getting the number. Okay, but uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, if they come into the open market and and buy that much, hell yeah, I mean, that's a lot of. That's that's obviously sure. I mean, that's somebody locking up nearly. 50% of the float, uh, that's that's going right. to do some huge, huge, you know, uh, things to the stock. Now, the only thing is that you have to have this come true, right? I mean, this has to actually happen. Uh, now, right. you, you are dealing with a former OTC stock, so this stock did trade at the OTC market for one time. And here's my thing. You know, if something like this happens, I mean, we live in a super capitalist society, why why aren't we seeing institutional investors why aren't we seeing kind of the mainstream excitement from you know guys with real capital who can come in here and take a fifty thousand dollar position waiting uh, on this expectation of the news why why hasn't it reacted since october 12th true that now there was something that i did see on stock twitch today and i'm going to try to pull this up really fast um, so something that happened with China today where they shut down, uh, a whole bunch of fossil fuel companies today to help regulate the, the carbon emissions. Now this company, SPI has a clean energy company, um, a, I guess a utility company in China. And these two people that are trying to, or these two companies that are trying to buy these shares are located in China. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to see really quick try to find this. I just saw it a little earlier today, so that's me seeing that news. You know, just made my uh, my feelers just go up <laughs> pretty high today. No problem. Go ahead. Uh, let me give you like one more second. Uh, but I know every single day that you have your show, I keep mentioning SPI, but you keep going off the wrong gate. No, I, I mean if you're if you're a believer in it, I mean uh, you oh, know yeah. uh, just. Right. You know, you're justifying your argument, and, and that's, that's what, you know, I always get and allow people to do. So uh, put out there what, what you think is going to happen, and if it happens, great. And if it doesn't, then, you know, it's a learning lesson. All right, so I can't find it. Honestly, all we're saying is China is adding solar power at a record pace and that they are trying to shut down as much of the emissions over there, um, as, you know, to regulate as much of the emissions in the air, the quality control uh, to, to be lowered. Because I guess people aren't even breathing over there. Yeah. But like I said, just be—I think these two, you know, Asian companies that are interested in this news. So many people are holding. You know, they're—they're not—they're not selling anything more to lower it lo than thirteen cents. Yeah. You know. Now, when is the expectation off. for the news? So, uh, there's no date on exactly when that order is supposed to be filled. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just released on the twelfth. And, you know, and basically people are saying that it should be before that their uh, compliance uh, date, uh, which is the 27th this Friday, they're saying it should be before that okay. so that they can not get delisted. Okay. Well, like I said, just keep your eyes on that. And if it spikes up big and someone else is in it, just say thank you. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, Poker Pro. Thanks for the call, man. You're most welcome, buddy. Talk to you later. Yes, indeed. So look, I, I, I look. There's, uh, there's more than enough money in this game for everybody. I want everybody to win. So, uh, you know, I, I wish him the best on it. But you know, uh, I, I, uh, you know, when you've been around for so for a while and you know kind of how these things go, where you get excited on these press releases, at, at and it gets to a point where you just need to see it happen, right? You just need to see it happen before you, you know. 
uh, start believing these because these companies will say anything, man. These companies will say anything. Uh, if you guys remember MMEX, uh, MMEX came out and said that they were building a, a $30 million uh, coal, uh, coal, what was it, like a coal plant or some bullshit like that. And they only had, you know, $3,000 in cash. So, uh, you know, <laughs> you just... You just gotta, you just gotta take everything with a grain of salt. All right. Yeah, M M E X, the coal play. H M, what's up, man? F T E G for the Earth Corp. For the Earth Corp, triple zero stock. Uh, looks like uh, somebody did a pump or something today in this, or maybe just a couple guys taking a large position in the stock for the Earth. F T E G is the ticker. Uh, they call themselves a high household goods company. So it could be one of those, what, green green companies? Maybe one of those green com companies? Do your research on that. Do your research on that. All right. What do I think about Ripple? Bit you know, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of Bitcoin, man. Just not, a, you know, but... I, I shout out to all the people who are who are playing it and making money, man. Shout out to all the people who are playing it and making money. The only thing about Bitcoin is I feel like, you know, unless you were you were in back in 20, 2009, 2010, 2011, you ain't really making no, you ain't really making shit, uh, you know. But shout out to some of these guys on on YouTube that have got some channels where you know they're lucked out and they sitting on a hundred Bitcoin, two hundred Bitcoin. Because they were in in 2010, 2011, and they just believed in it so much. And now they're like the little Bitcoin superstars, right? They're like the, the guys in Bitcoin uh, because they just happen to believe in the technology early. Uh, I believe in the technology, don't believe in the actual coin itself, though. But the technology is here to stay, absolutely. You know, but I think I think the Bitcoin of the future is PayPal. That's what it is. PayPal is going to be the Bitcoin of the future. That's how everybody's going to get paid is, is PayPal. All right. Uh, MGTI, you guys know I've been shitting on this stock for a long time. Uh, $2.08 Bitcoin stock. Uh, Bitcoin traders are some of the most intelligent people out there. Uh, you really can't be an idiot and, and be into Bitcoin. Bitcoin is something that requires you know somebody to have at least some sort of intelligence to really understand and guys who are into bitcoin are going to buy bitcoin or and other alt currencies uh cryptocurrencies they're not going to buy bitcoin stock right so uh any kind of bitcoin quote stock that's automatic short automatic short uh, because you're dealing with equity traders and equity traders are not bitcoin traders for the most part uh, and they're going to look at your company a lot differently. And that's what's going on with MGTI. You know, it's, it's, you know, Bitcoin traders are not putting their money in equities. They're putting their money in Bitcoin. Every dollar they can get, they're put buying in some alt currency, some ICO, some, you know, every dollar they can get. So any kind of Bitcoin stock, that's a short. Short, short, short. CBIO, Catalyst Biosciences. Uh, down two dollars. Down two dollars. I really want to know what you guys are, are are looking to see the move tomorrow. Obviously, you know when it comes to the small caps, you really can't pick them, right? You can't really just say, "Hey, this is going to move tomorrow." Obviously, we saw SNES. That's a that's an automatic look uh, tomorrow uh, in the morning if you like the small caps to see what can that is going to happen or what what that what's going to happen to that stock. And you got to look at to see where you know the morning. Um, uh, you know, futures are for the market. Uh, let's look at investing.com. And right now we're up. We're actually up in the futures market. S&P 500 futures are up two points. NASDAQ futures up 10 points. Uh, you know, but that, that can change. That can change. That can very much change. Uh, Euro is up. So dollar is down. We got a cheap dollar so far. Gold is up two points. And by the way, we saw the VIX go higher today too. We saw the VIX move like 12% today. Uh, VIX. Yeah, there it is. 11.3%. We saw the VIX move higher uh, today. That was interesting too. And by the way, 
I've talked about that too. You have uh, volatility traders. You have guys who only trade volatility. All they look up is uh, trading stocks in the VIX or they're playing the UVZ or something like that. UZY. What's that? What's that one that they play where it's like VU? It's like this weird one is UXV. What's that one? Hold on. It's UZ. Uh, it's like the spider SPDR volatility. What is that one? Is the what is that ticker? It's like the UV something. It's gonna bother me if I don't get it. Uh, UVXY. There it is. Yeah, it is UVXY. Okay. Yeah, you got guys who play this, the UVXY. And all they've been doing is shorting it for the most of the year, right? So every time it spikes, they'll buy puts on it and then work, you know, pull it back down, or rather, just follow, uh, follow it back down as the market continue to be very bullish. But here's the thing: this thing will go against you like a monster if you if you not if you don't do it right. So as we see here, we've been oversold for a long time as the bulls have been winning. As the bulls have been winning uh, on the ETFs and the exchange and the uh, overall exchange, but uh, volatility, interestingly enough, coming back into the markets here on this on this ticker. Yeah, thank you guys, Javier, Derek, Bram, appreciate it. Yeah. All right, so Atos, ATOS, sixty-two cents a share. 62 cents a share. Don't know, man. This is an ugly looking chart. Look at that. It's an ugly looking chart. I, I see how you could have believed in this, right? And then it just fell on, just fell off a roof. 251, what's up? You're on the air. What's going on, sir? Hey, Anthony, what's up, man? Nothing much, man. I'm glad you're back on the air, man. Back yes. the, the real network. <laughs> Absolutely. Appreciate it, man. Been, 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 uh, been missing you here and there because, uh, been working, finishing up a job I'm working on. I got no time to get started on, you know. So, but no, no, no no but anyway. I, I mean, I know you own your own company, so you're doing what you got to do. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm, 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 I'm interested in this. I'm looking at this ticker, uh, VSAR. Okay. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell me something about it. I see you had a, a gap down. Yeah, yeah, VSAR, man, this has been one of those ones that, you know, I was in it for a while and, you know, a nickel here, a nickel there, and it was just, I just, it was killing me because it wasn't getting out of these these levels, right? And uh, it had some hope at some time where we thought it would move. It just never ended up going anywhere. Uh, let mm -hmm. me pull up maybe an hourly to get it closer to see. Uh, but it just, it just, nothing ever happened, man. Nothing ever happened. I mean, I can't even really zoom in on it. Uh, because it just hasn't done anything, and it mm -hmm. was a drug failure. It was a, a the biotech play came out had a drug failure, uh, and you know that the drug that ended up failing was the fact that it was it was its primary or lead drug candidate. It was the primary one that they were working on. They have some other ones, but they're not even close to being in the same uh, you know level in terms of what this uh, their, their prime candidate was. Uh, and it just it's, it hasn't been able to you know recover from it. Will it recover eventually? You know, it, mm -hmm. it, it the technical say it's supposed to, but it doesn't have to, right? So I mean, yeah. uh, that's just where it is right now. This is another one very similar to uh, OTIC, O T I C, mm -hmm. where you had another lot of guys who again another drug failure and a lead candidate drug, and it just never has recovered. So it can happen like that, and you know. There's so many other better plays right now. I, you know, I I just wouldn't even play it right now. I just I would probably okay. yeah, yeah. Because the 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 question the question that I was gonna ask you, African and and, and uh, back scientist, was what would be a good one for another long term play? Because I'm looking for another long term play uh, to put to put some money into to to you know situate myself, position myself, so I can you know. Hold it for a long, you know, long term. So that's what I'm looking for now. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, I've been busy. I haven't had time to really sit down and, you know, do some research. So I know African, you know, African important. He, he's on it and, and, and Bats is on it. And, you know, so I'm looking for a long-term play. So yeah. I can put some money in it. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, you know, that's something we can look for. That's something we can look for. Uh, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's hard yes, to find yes, value yeah. right now. It's, it's it's hard to find value right now. Obviously, uh, you know, you got a lot of stocks that are moving higher. Uh, you're looking for preferably a small cap, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So small cap, small cap be good or 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 a cheap Nasdaq. Yeah. yeah, either either one. Yeah, it's 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 not the hardest to find value right uh, now. I saw somebody put in uh, G S uh, G S S. Yeah, G S S the gold, but you the, yeah you would have to uh, G S S is nice, but you would have to have gold continue to do what it's doing, and yeah, no. you're probably looking to find something that's kind of not going to be affected by any kind of commodity uh prices uh and i'm thinking man uh let me see i thought gopro was turning around i guess not uh, but yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll continue to look for something like that uh but you know to put you into something that's running that's not already like crazy overextended that's going to take some time to find i'm not even going to lie about that yeah, yeah, cause I was I was looking at NHK. NHK did it, did a little thing on the little news that they had, <clears throat> but now it's, it's it's going back the other way, yeah. going against itself. Yeah. But that's good too for me, cause yeah. like I said, if it get to, I know they're gonna get back down to it may, but I doubt if it get back down to a dollar dollar uh twenty or thirty. But I do like I said, dollar sixty, dollar seventy. Uh, you know. To buy more shares on it, but yeah, right now that's where I'm at, you know. Okay. And I, I just don't want. I mean, I'm, I'm keeping in it, but like I said, I'm looking for another one so I can do another long term play. Sure, sure. Yeah. Obviously, at those I'm levels, Anthony, time. you already know. I mean, a dollar fifty, dollar six three is not going to have the prettiest chart. You're going to, uh, re- you know, see some ups and downs in it. It's going to look probably pretty choppy. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know that that kind of comes with those those stocks that trade on those prices. So. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, we'll keep on an eye out and, and keep watching the show, man. Okay. Appreciate you it, Anthony. Good, I'm glad, 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 glad you're back, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah. All right. Shout out to Anthony for the call. Shout out to Anthony for the call. So when they say FPVD is a dud, man, yeah. they always, always say it's a dud and then it hits and then, you know, I get the, in, the emails bitching, people bitching. It shouldn't have got out. Okay. Uh, get his account up little by little. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just that's how you play it, man. Just little by little. But you know, he's looking for a dollar fifty, a dollar sixty. It's you know, that's that's, you know, he's not gonna get a pretty chart at a dollar fifty, dollar sixty stock, dollar seventy, dollar eighty. You know, it's not gonna be a very pretty chart. Uh, but he can find something. I mean, there's still some deals out there. You know. Um. Obviously, you know, if you want the gains, though, you're going to have to, you know, go in your pockets a little deeper and, and, and stretch yourself. Uh, MJNA. Oh, hell no. I wouldn't put, you know, he's looking at something to put some heavy cash in. I wouldn't put him in something like this. You know, Anthony's talking about dropping maybe 5, 10K in something. I wouldn't put him in an OTC. No way. Not for that kind of money. No, OTC only you know it's a couple hundred bucks, two hundred, hundred and fifty, maybe three hundred. You know, maybe that. I I never go more than you know maybe seven fifty if you really believe in it. But I never go. You know, you got guys who put two or three thousand. Fuck that shit. And then you're wondering why when you hit the, when it's time for you to close, you can't get out because nobody else is hitting it for for a thousand, two thousand dollars. Worth the shares. Uh, IGC, Indian Globalization Capital. Uh, 
IGC. Don't know anything about it. Don't know anything about it. ANTM. ANTM. 195. Anthem. Okay, this is what? Blue Cross Blue Shield, right? Blue Cross Blue Shield. Yeah, he pulled back. Uh, let me see here. This was that news when uh, I think Trump came out and said he wasn't going to give them the payments or anything like that. Yeah. Don't know too much about health care stocks in terms of uh, the insurance on the insurance side. But I know uh, United Health puts up some really stupid numbers. There's United, yeah, there it is. There's United Health. United Health has got like a NVIDIA stock chart, man. This is insane. And by the way, NVIDIA can't lose on NVIDIA. You can't lose. Stock pulled back a little bit today, but I, I if there was one recession-proof stock, it could be NVIDIA. Just because the technology is just going in that direction. You, you, you just, I, don't, I think you can't lose. Obviously, you know, you got a lot of money in there that if the market goes bearish, you know, it's going to come out and ETFs are going to thin out and they're going to have to rebalance and close positions and sell shares. And so it, it'll get hurt. But, you know, you're not going to see NVIDIA crash like you'll see many others crash. D-E-S-T. Destination maternity. OK, yeah. Somebody tell me what's going on with destination maternity, man. I mean. You know this. This is uh. This is a what mother? Yeah, for pregnant mothers, right? They sell like pregnancy clothes and shit like that. Um, uh, I always get them confused with Dress Barn, which I think Dress Barn is publicly traded. Isn't Dress Barn? I think Dress Barn is publicly traded, right? Or they used to be. Uh, I think they used to be. But Dress Barn. I always get them confused with Dress Barn. Dress Barn stock. Yeah, th okay, so they're under Asina Retail. Okay, so they got, they used to trade themselves. It looks like they got bought out by Asina Retail Group. Uh, ASNA. ASNA. Uh, oh, wow, this is definitely shitted on itself. Okay. Asina Retail. All right. But yeah, uh I mean, let me know what the story there is on 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 DEST. I mean, uh they sell, you know, maternity clothes. So are we going through a baby boom or something like that? Where is all this, you know? And the volume is is quite unusual for the stock. So I'm thinking this is what a pump or something or what? Cuz this wasn't very liquid. Or as liquid before, and now here we have all this volume coming in. You know, some of these guys in these chat rooms, you can't trust them for shit. Look what they did to people in SRAX. You remember last week with, with SRAX? Look what they did to those people, man. That was horrible. Just shitting on people. They didn't give a damn. Like, hey, guys, everybody, jump in with us. SRAX. SRAX. You, know, you can look up their tweets on Twitter. They didn't give a damn. Just left people in the dust. Dries, D R Y S. Yeah, I don't even want to hear Dries. You guys know how we all feel about Dries up in here. We say Bitcoin gold to zero, man. All these damn coins, I can't keep up with all these damn coins. You know, McAfee's got a John McAfee. He's got a damn coin. You got pot. Isn't there a, a, a marijuana coin too? Pot coin. There's a pot coin. There's a whole bunch of black coin. There's there's a whole bunch of coins, man. And most of these, you can't even, like, get your money in and out as quickly. You know? It's not, they're not all as liquid as, as Bitcoin. Uh, but again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, huge, huge day tomorrow. Huge, huge day tomorrow on the stock exchanges. Again, uh, McDonald's, Caterpillar, Lockheed Martin, LMT, that's another one. General Motors, 3M, huge. All of Sherman Williams, 
TD Ameritrade, Novartis, NVS. Man, that's another uh, big-ass pharmaceutical company. We just got done talking about pharmaceuticals. Uh, Pulte Group, the home developer, all right, out of Michigan, Pulte Homes, Polaris. Uh, who else? Regions Financial. We got a bank stock delivering numbers tomorrow. Chrysler. Chrysler's coming out with numbers tomorrow. So, you know, uh, who else? You got, a, you got a lot of big, big companies delivering tomorrow. Later on in the week, we get uh, Google. We get a whole, who else? We get Google. We get a whole bunch of other names. Twitter, Ford Motor Company, American Airlines on Thursday, uh, UPS, Comcast, uh, Union Pacific, Charter Communications, GNC, Western uh, Waste Management. So, look, mix it up, guys. I know you all love the pennies. I love the pennies, too. But, uh, you know, don't don't lose out on what's been going on out here. Uh, you know, the most impressive bull market of our lives uh, as it leads eventually into one of the greatest recessions of our lives. No doubt about it when it happens. When it happens. Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. As well, Bank of America delivered. Said tomorrow's going to be a green day. I expect tomorrow to be a green day, especially if we get a, you know, big numbers out of Caterpillar, 3M, and Lockheed Martin. The S and P 500, uh, you know, Lockheed Martin, Caterpillar, and 3M are are pretty large uh, in that in that grouping. So, uh, if they deliver numbers, I think they in themselves are going to be able to keep the market afloat in the green tomorrow. Uh, we saw that a couple days ago in IBM, where you had IBM, which was, this was, yeah, a couple days ago, the 18th, last week, where IBM came out with these stupid numbers. Nobody even imagined IBM. Good God, we talked about it on the show. Like, IBM, who the, who the, where, where did these come from? Uh, incredible earnings for IBM, and... Now it's pulling back a little bit, as it was expected to do at these levels. But uh, with that being said, um, they they kept the market green. IBM kept the market green just on on them alone because IBM again does uh, is is in the Fortune 500, and then that's just based on its market caps. It's, you know, uh, but it hasn't been something that's brought the boys to the yard, but uh, delivered last week and kept the market up. AMD earnings. Yeah, AMD earnings as well. Uh, when is that? Is that the night? When is AMD earnings? Tomorrow? Okay, tomorrow AMD earnings? Okay. Tomorrow AMD earnings? I expect them to beat. I expect them to beat. I don't know if they're going to get it like last time. If you guys remember, everybody was looking for 15, and it got the 15 and just sold off, right? They got 15. Got to about 15.62 at the open, and then just you had six, seven days of just insane selling. So AMD has a tendency to do that. If you look up, uh, I didn't do it that time, but if you look up AMD, that was a miss. Uh, it hit then, and it sells off. So you'll, you'll, this one was an unusual one. This one was that, January of 2017, All right where it hit, and then it ran for like almost two weeks. Uh, but the last time it hit great numbers, great numbers, but then it sold off because of those higher, they just wasn't, and it was at a resistance point. So if you get it tomorrow, AMD, you open up 1550, 1560, understand you are at a resistance point for the stock and it could very well sell off again. So be aware of that. Uh, but AMD doesn't doesn't do very well at the 15. Doesn't like 15 too much. Uh, GE, GE, you got to go long on GE, man. GE, you know, uh, you got to go long on GE. Uh, in fact, if we look at uh, GE real quick, if we look at GE real quick on the options chain, and if I pull up GE, Let's look at GE options. If I'm you, I'm going for the January. I wouldn't even, there's nothing else, nothing. I wouldn't even touch anything else in 2017, 2018. If you know what's going on with them, I wouldn't even touch anything else. 
And basically what I'm going to be doing is, let me see here, I'm going to be looking for the 2019 $18 put, right? This is this is gaining in value. Look at this open interest. This is actually gaining in value. 2019 downside protection and then your upside, I'll probably go with your $28 or not maybe 60. I would even go further out. I would do a $35 $35 right now on the 2019. So, you got protection both ways. If the stock falls on its ass and you get below 18, which is very likely you win on either way. You're going to fall on your ass on the call, but you're still making money on the long, uh, or excuse me, on the on the put. So as the put goes into the money, if the stock goes down, you ended up you end up selling the put for profit. And if you get a turnaround by, you know, middle of next year, June, maybe even, you know, as early as April of next year, uh you still have the call to 35, right? That that expires at the end, you know, at the beginning of 2019. So you can end up selling this $35 call that you got here for 14 cents. You can sell this maybe one day in July or possibly even September or October of next year for 70, maybe 80. Again, it doesn't even have to be at $35, right? It could just be halfway there. Imagine if you get back to 27. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, again, I'm, I'm you know, just just thinking, just thinking. But that's if I'm going to play it, but you've got so many other things that are moving in between then, I wouldn't, you know. That's if you're going to do it and you got that extra cash to lay about. That's if you got the extra cash to lay about. Said uh, when buying options, don't forget about the theta. Yeah, you can. That, that's that's. It's so far out. You don't even have to worry. It's so far out. That's not even. You know, I. I it, it's, it's. Those are concerns, but they're just so far out. Uh, you know, you're you're paying for the time, and when you take the cost of the auction divided by the time, it, it's you know. It just makes sense if you got the money to lay around. That's the only thing. A lot of guys don't have the money to lay around like that. And if you look at that open interest, I can almost guarantee you that is institutional money as well as bank. You know, uh, well, bank is institutional money as well as you know guys who've just got a lot of cash that they can you know go ahead and play those and go ahead and play those. Uh, equity facts earnings tomorrow. I I wouldn't touch equity facts tomorrow uh although they could put up some good numbers right uh they came out and said that you know even though they had did a, this horrible thing that uh you know they were making money on it they in fact were richer than they've ever been so uh that's equity facts for you so it could very well beat earnings but you know by all means i'd be on the put side of whatever that comes whatever number comes out that's amazing. I'll definitely try to time that top. Uh it's, it's like I'm gonna be doing tomorrow with Caterpillar, because that's gonna sell off as well too. Uh but you know, this one the daily chart isn't that bad, right? It's not that it's not too bad here. And it's been pulling back from that from that top. Uh pulling back from excuse me, from that bottom, uh when that those that news hit the wire. And things have been cooling down a little bit. Uh but still a lot of Bad news still yet to come on equity, equity facts. There's a lot of these district attorneys and uh, excuse me, not district attorneys, but these what are they called? The state state lawyers. I forgot what they're called. Um, there, there's title for them, but the state the head lawyer of the state. I forgot what he's called. You guys know what he's called, but uh, they're going after equity facts uh, in defense of their citizens of their particular uh, states. Uh, J I L L. J I L L Jill Women's Apparel. Yeah, I you know, here's the thing about Jill. You you probably move back into the green and, and we pulled this up last week on Jill. We pulled this up last week Thursday. Last week Thursday on, on Jill. Uh you do, you know, I think you move back into the green, but you don't stay too far in there. 
you don't stay too far in there. Again, this was retail. The stock was already not necessarily doing the best. Uh, the company just got, man, look at that. The company just started trading again here in April. I think this was not, this was a company that was trading, went private, and came back. You do your research on that. Uh, but boy, look at that, man. This is, you know, come on. $12, $12 to start. This summer, you were at 12 something, 12.40, then you got into the 11. Now, looking at that, $5 a share. $5 a share. That is just a monster. Kill. Monster kill. 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 That's, kill. that's just kill. horrible, 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 horrible. All right. Can I talk about my philosophy on trading options? I only, um, I only play the down. I play up and down, but I only play extended, you know, overextended or overbought situations. Just like I play stocks, just overextended or overbought. I don't try to, you know, play the middle of the range. I don't know where the hell the thing's going. Uh, overbought, oversold. That's all I play. You know, don't try to. I don't try to, you know, guess where it's going to be a month from now or two months from now. You know, if I'm, you know, unsure about how soon it's going to get in the money, then I give myself time on the option. If I'm pretty confident, then I'm going to take an uh, expiration that ends the same week that, I, that I, I'm trading. You know, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Said who short Jill? Somebody did. S somebody did. Somebody shorted the uh, Jill. Yeah. Somebody did. Yeah, we did talk DOLV. We did talk DOLV. We're about to close up the show now. Uh, again, guys, this is this is you know a great great week of trading. Not necessarily for the small caps. You know, this is you know definitely a a a large cap week right you're still going to see a got uh you know news you're going to have those one-offs uh in this in the small cap side so keep watching the the news uh releases as we saw today with snex which is probably the most important stock to watch tomorrow on the small cap side uh but other than that you really don't have much else going uh we talked about you know getting some bearish confirmation tomorrow but with the numbers that are going to be expected out of many of these large caps like Caterpillar and 3M, they may very well keep at least the S&P green. At least the S&P green. I don't know about the Qs uh, or the tech stocks on the Nasdaq side. Uh, you know, maybe later in the week we see a rebound and those. But I consider to see probably a continued sell off in that. Uh, Mira Barak five day challenge. Uh, Mira Barak is hilarious. Has anybody is anybody working with him? Mira Barak is hilarious. I I, I like Mira Barak because I think he's he's guy's a killer trader, makes a lot of money. But I, I just think his trading style is just so you can't you know because he's working with so much capital, you can't you know you can't follow him because he's working with so much capital. You know I'm watching the guy and again. His little thing where it's like, okay, we're looking for 125, 125, okay, I'm watching, I'm watching, okay, okay, I'm in, I'm in, 125, okay, okay, 122, okay, 121, okay, 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 okay. I'm out, I'm out, okay, okay, I'm out, $5,000 gain, okay. I'm like, all right, I mean, and, and great, like, he just made 5000 bucks. But if you look at his system, he he took he took a sixty thousand dollar position. Like that was a sixty thousand dollar trade, bro. That was a sixty thousand dollar trade, and he was in for like you know a minute, if that. So he doesn't need, you know. So if he gets like a two percent move on sixty crate on sixty thousand, that's that's huge. That's a huge win for for somebody working with that much capital. Yeah, Desert Edge, absolutely. He's he's a millionaire many times over. And the thing about Mir Barak is that 
I can't get anything. I think he made his money before trading. I mean, trading made him more money, but he made his money in something else. You know, but the stock market, again, is, is about scale. And the more money you have, uh, the more you can win, the more you can win. And it doesn't require you to necessarily need a big move to make. If you, you know, you got 10 million bucks, dude, you, you can trade with $1 million every day. You get 1% a day. That's one, oh, well, maybe not 1%, but 2%, two, you know, that's all you need to continue to make a killing for yourself, right? To just continue to just kill. You know, 80%, 80% of all publicly traded shares on the NASDAQ and the Dow are owned by the top 10% of this country. The top 10% owns 80% of all tradable shares on the NASDAQ and Dow. The top 10% of this country. So, you know, they're in it. We're providing the liquidity, us the small money, we're providing the liquidity. And they're using us to get in and out of, of these trades and and using us to butter up their, their deals. And again, that, you know, that's that's America. You know, we live in a super capitalist society. That's what it is. Uh, and you can Google that, by the way, too. I mean, you, you, can, you can Google that information. That's out there. So we're providing the liquidity. We're going to work trading hours for dollars, investing in these 401ks. You know, putting your money in acorns and all of these other passive investing systems that continue to feed the beast, continue to feed, you know, the wealthy of, of, of our society. You know, I saw the new list of fortune, fortune of five was the fortune richest people. You know, Bill Gates increased his net worth over the last 12 months by 16 billion dollars. 16 billion dollars over the last 12 months that's insane that's insane he has over the last year he's earned more than some some entire nation's gdp that's that's crazy that's crazy thankfully he's a giver and he's doing supposedly good work i've been hearing some different things like guys out here uh sterilizing people and all that shit but you know, I digress. I've heard. I heard. You know, don't, don't don't send a lawyer my way. With that being said, folks, uh, I'm gonna ring the bell. I'm gonna ring the bell. Uh, I'm gonna ring the bell. And uh, he said, "My Mir Barak," but that's Mir Barak, though. I mean, that's. That's that's how he sounds, man. You know, that's exactly that's Mir Barak. You know, no real trading analysis, no real, you know, just I mean, I mean, I mean, OK, I'm out. That's 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 just what he does, man. And after watching a couple of his videos, I just couldn't take it anymore, man. And, you know, just it's unrealistic, you know, it's unrealistic, you know, but I know a lot of people who, who you know, who admire him and what he's doing. But he's not for the small investor. Yes, indeed. He said Mir Barak is live on YouTube every day. Yeah, shout out to him, man. Again, he's he's a killer trader, man. He's a killer trader. If you have, you know, that kind of money, you can do it too. Everybody in here, I, I'm I'm well convinced that the only thing that separates these guys that have, you know, incredible winning percentages and Many of us who are struggling with, you know, five-figure and four-figure accounts, it's just money. It's really just money. Because when you have a lot more money, the pressure isn't as much. You know, there's not as much pressure uh, to win. And there are trades you can make that, you know, you can't make when you only have, you know, $5,000. Or you only have 1000 or 500 bucks. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got you got guys out here who email me and they, they got 500 bucks. They make one bad trade and they're down to, you know, they're 230, 240, you can't do shit. You know? But you got 50K, you lose 1,000, man, you're still in the game. That's nothing. That's nothing. What's going on, O'Shea? Appreciate you, bro. 
Shout out to O'Shea, Duke Jackson. I'm about to do what you do. I need to get out of the country, man. I need to do what he does and get out of the country. I was looking up. Uh, it's so funny because I was on uh, his channel, his show, and he was talking to me about how he was in Uganda. And I looked up this weekend. I actually looked up a place in Uganda. I saw a three-bedroom, two-bath in Uganda for fucking 300 bucks. I was like, man, let me get up on this plane. But, you know, look, that's it's Uganda, right? You know, it's Uganda. Uh, but they got some bubbles out in Uganda. Let me not go change the channel and change the subject too much. But they got some stupid bubbles out there in Uganda, man. You brothers need to get your passports and get up out. Go see what's up. I keep telling you, telling you brothers to, to get some passports, all of you. Get some passports, go to the Philippines, go down to, uh, you know, South America, go to Africa, go to Europe. You know, well, probably don't go to Europe if you're a brother, you know, uh, probably that's probably not a good look. But there's some other, you know, East, yeah, West, Eastern Europe, yeah, stay out of Eastern Europe, not too far in there, you know. Get your head cut off or some shit. O'Shea's like, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Maybe they be having some stupid bubbles out there, man. Yeah, O'Shea, we can put that together, man. All right, so I don't want to keep you guys up all night. But, yeah, check out O'Shea Duke Jackson uh, Vlogcast. Check out Investors Hangout. Check out EquityFeed.com, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's been a great show. Hour 45 minutes or 41 minutes or so, whatever it is. Press like on this right now. Press like. I appreciate you guys. Uh, go ahead and donate, ladies and gentlemen, to my Patreon. Uh, I don't know why I keep forgetting to put the link permanently in the description. Must not want y'all money so bad. Uh, I had somebody hit me up today. I had deleted the, com the comment on my Instagram. Oh, you asking people for $10, but you made $1,200 today. Yeah, but that's that. that that money is to grow, you know, to, 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 to grow my wealth. It's not to spend on my show. My show is, is a love of, you know, the game. And uh, if you want to help me grow and, and develop this love and, you know, uh, get it better, then, you know, contribute and we'll, we'll you know, reinvest it into some new shit and new things uh, to, to make this better. So if you've got $5 a month, if you've got $5 a month, you know, because I know most of you guys don't cook in here. So if you cannot go to McDonald's and get, you know, a 10-piece nugget or a double cheeseburger or whatever that killer stuff you guys get, just one time, not do it. Go ahead and donate that $5 to me, signing up at patreon.com slash finance, patreon.com slash finance. And uh, become one of my partners here on the show. All right. Everybody have a great trading day tomorrow. SNES is the only small cap I think you really need to be watching tomorrow. Uh, the other ones we pulled up today again. I, I don't see a second day as a possibility in any of them, honestly. I uh, don't see a second day in any of them. I did see, what was that OTC? I even forgot that OTC everybody was bringing up. Uh, DOLV. DOLV possibly could have another run tomorrow. Uh, just because you've got a lot of traders in there, man. you got a lot of traders in DOLV. So they, that very well could be the OTC stock of tomorrow. So look out for that tomorrow. Uh, and then any other news that comes out. But other than that, you're playing earnings. A lot of options plays tomorrow. There it is, folks. Yes, indeed. So I'm saying, look at the weekly. Ah, uh, well, I mean, yeah, look, the weekly is going to be affected by what happened today. So, if you get a huge one-day move, you know, the weekly, and especially it being a Monday, right? It's going to represent the whole. And no, really, no matter what day it is, if you got a huge candlestick like that, it's just going to destroy the whole, you know, pattern. So let's see if it holds. Let's see if it holds. All right. So peace out, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get you guys out of here correctly. Victor Pesos. 
NEOT to watch tomorrow. We'll see. Life for a business. Appreciate it, man. LeBron James and Penny Stocks. <laughs> cool cats. I'm, I'm just the one, you know, the most committed. The most committed. That's all. To this show, man. Love doing it. Love. I'm glad you guys, you know, love watching it. Love. Glad you guys love watching it. I could talk about stocks for like hours, man. I can just go on and on and on. Joe Silver, appreciate it, man. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, Joe. Desert Edge. Again, O'Shea Duke Jackson, man. Keep doing what you're doing out there. Appreciate you having uh, you know, the time to take and to, to come into my chat room, brother. I appreciate that. Higher level HM. Uh, Captain Kabongo. You see, I gotta exit with the accent. <laughs> Maybe some other time, brother, man. Don't, don't let me fuck it up, man. You know, you guys keep letting me play with these accents. I'll spit it out here and there, but it's not gonna be funny if I just keep fucking it up, you know, and just keep, you know. Derek Graham, Javier Rayborn, Tony Johnson. Uh,. Shout out to, to Ken. Hey, Ken, I hope you're not mad at me, man. You know, uh, I noticed Ken. I don't know. Ken was kind of mad that I, I called FRS a scam, and I think he was in the stock. So, you know, sometimes people feel a certain kind of way. I hope that's not you, man. I hope that's not you. All right? Don't take these things personally. They come and go. Appreciate you guys. SC Trucker, appreciate it. All my truckers. Thank you, man. Appreciate you having you back in there, SC Trucker. See you tomorrow night, guys. Trade well.